our sponsors. The Finkley Experience, an educational consulting firm that specializes in first-generation education and which prepares high school students for college. For more information, visit their website at thefinkleyexperience.com. Father to Father Incorporated, a nonprofit organization that strengthens families through father engagement with a goal to help men in our communities to be great dads. For more information, visit their website, fathertofatherinc.org. Ablaze Entertainment. The goal of Ablaze is to take emerging artists and develop them to the next level of their career. For more information, visit their website at ablazeentertainment.net. Thank you. Hey everyone, it's Jasper Cole, one of Hollywood's bad guys, and you are watching The Incredible, The Michael Finkley Show. On the next Michael Finkley, actor and filmmaker, Harley Wallen is with as us as he talks about his project, Finding Nicole. Next Finkley. Hello everybody, welcome to the Michael Finkley Show. Thanks for joining us today. So I was talking with a good friend the other day and he mentioned to me that, you know, what do you think about this opportunity? So I looked at it and, you know, there was a cost to it. It wasn't that much, right? And um, it was just a chance for them to grow and learn and improve and go to the next level. And I said, do it, right? Just go do it. So within that conversation, I realized something about myself as well. Um, that I promised to myself, and you have to just keep reminding yourself of certain things. If an opportunity presents itself and you feel comfortable in your being, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Be like Nike. Just do it. And so after that conversation with him, you know, he's like, you know what, I want to do it. You know, life is too short. You know, things happen so quickly. You know, if something presents itself and you feel good about it within you, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Because I dare not want to live with regret, right? I don't want to say, I wish I should have, could have, would have did this. I want to say, I tried this, and this is how it happened. This is how it worked out for me. It was a good experience. It was a bad experience. But I can say, at the end of the day, that I did it. So, that's my advice to you for today. Just do it. Do what makes you happy. Do what is content within your own being. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. But you never know where you're going to end up. You never know when the opportunity, what opportunity is on the other side of that opportunity. So just pursue it. Go do it. And I'm learning that each and every day that I wake up, that the God allows me to wake up and see another day. I'm going to take opportunities by the string and I'm going to do it. Go do it. And my next guest is a great example of that as well. Harley Wallen is with us today, and he is an actor, a filmmaker, and he does so many different things. And he talks about his latest project, Finding Nicole, and it's just so powerful. It has a powerful message, powerful meaning. It's so much to, it's, it's so much to impact with this project that he's working on, and I'm excited to chat with him about it. So, Fink Fam, another cool interview on the way. Don't you go away. Back in a moment. Next, Harley is with us. Back in a moment. My name is Zeal, and I am a Christian music artist, and you are watching The Michael Finkley Show. Next, Michael Finkley, gospel artist Dennis Turner is with us as he tells us about his projects and more. Next, Finkley. Hello, everybody. It's Finkley from The Finkley Experience educational consulting fund that specializes in first-generation education. So we assist students with their college and career endeavors. We train school administrators on the state of first-generation students. And also, we partner with colleges and universities to assist their first-generation population for easy transition from high school to college. So if you're looking for a presenter or a speaker that presents on these topics and so much more, visit our website at thethinkleyexperience.com and learn about all that we do. We're looking forward to working with you. Hello, 
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Michael Finkley Show. Now, y'all, my next guest, he is a multi award winning director and actor. Y'all, of course, he is Harley Rowland. How are you? I'm awesome, Michael. Thanks so much for having me. You are very, very welcome. Uh, when your team reached out to us and I, I saw your story and all the things you've done, you're doing, and you're doing things with substance. Like, we really need to hear things that people are going through, right? I'm like, yeah, let's have a conversation. Definitely, let's have a conversation. So thank you for saying yes. Uh, so I must ask, you know, we are blessed with so many different gifts and talents. When did you discover your creative side? I think I've always had it. My mom said when I was five, we were watching Tarzan together as a family. And I said I was going to move to America and I was going to be the next Tarzan. I was going to be an actor. I was going to be a star and blah, blah, blah. So I, I must have had it in me already. Then my mom was a singer. She's open for ABBA. My sister is a singer. Uh, a lot of music and a lot of art and a lot of uh, performing in our house. Dad played all kinds of instruments. He was the kind of guy who could literally pick up a guitar, listen to a song on the radio, and just join in. I n don't know how. And never been trained in his life. So people weren't loving it. He'd play the harmonica, the the, the piano, just on feel. After he figured out what the, what the keys did, it was just unreal. Now, that really shows that that creative gene was definitely passed on to you yeah. and you've been <laughs> running with it ever since, which is amazing. So yeah. at what point in your career did you say, you know what, I can do this for real. You know, I can really make a, a life and living from this. It's really weird. Cause I feel like I've lived like five lifetimes already. I, I, I was, I started as, as a martial artist. I got on the national team in two different martial arts when I was younger, I was a, a break dancer. I made it as a, one of the Scandinavians' uh, uh, best break dancers. I started releasing music as a singer, and I did some rap back in the day. Even released songs at the Cannes Music Market, and then stumbled upon a TV show that needed background dancers. It was like a cabaret style show. Um, got put on there, and and instead of hiring actors for some of their one liners and stuff like that. They would ask us, and I started falling in love with acting. I ended up finding myself in acting school and, and hiring a coach, and I never looked back. It just uh, just fell in love with it. Oh, I love it. And when did that love start? At what around oh, what age? I like I said, my mom said at five, but uh, but but me going after really acting and it. almost getting this with the rest of everything. Probably 18, 19. I really, really, I, I couldn't get enough of it. Mm -hmm. I, stud I studied and I read all the books and and uh, and uh, started trying to figure out which method I like the most. I can really nerd out and talk acting all day, but I, I know that it would, nobody would want to listen to that. <laughs> yes, we would. Yes, we would, Harley. We would love to listen to it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Definitely, because I love to hear people's stories because we, you can find yourself in other people's stories oh, as well. Oh, yeah. You really, yeah. really can. Yes, sir. Uh, so I love, I love that you fell, you found your love, mm -hmm. right? And you've been running with it ever since. And you've done a lot of different things. How did you handle those no's? How did you handle those yeses that came your way? So that's a really good question. And I've had a lot of people that have been mentoring me who thinks the discipline from the martial arts really helped because when, when you're in martial arts, it don't matter how good you are, you're going to lose. Uh, it's just that it's just a numbers game. Somebody's going to take your number every now and then, uh, no matter how good you are. So the fact that I learned to live with a loss and always look at how I can improve from it has really made me function like that ever since. So, you know, I, I started out uh, when I started filmmaking, I went to Rocket Jump Film School and I, and I completed that. And then I started doing studio binder and then I started doing masterclass, but I'm like always studying after every single film. I always look, I always take the feedback and I look and say, what's good feedback, what's, you know, constructive and what's haters. I scoop the haters aside. I look at the constructive stuff and I try to be better next time. So I just study everything that I felt like I could have done better. And that's just how I, that's just how I'm wired. I love that formula. 
because sometimes we forget and we just focus on the negative. That's why we so we stop and you know we and we need to just keep on going. And I love that yeah. you had that formula down packed in the beginning. So again, you've done so many different things, but currently I need to talk about this um, inspired true story, finding the coal. Please tell us about this project. Yeah, this was probably. You know, I, I, I don't like talking too much about religion and things because we all believe in different things and, and people can get pulled into the conversation and get it the wrong way. But I felt that there was a divine finger in this moving things. Um, my lawyer is also the, the lawyer of Nicole, who wrote a book uh, about her experience and what happened to her. And it's a miracle this woman is alive. Um, but Netflix uh, was interested in acquiring the uh, the uh, documentary rights. He said, you know, what have you ever thought about doing a, a, a film uh, uh, on your story? And she goes, well, yeah, actually I have. I've written a book and I'm interested in taking it further. And he says, well, I wrapped this filmmaker guy and he really does awesome things. You should meet with him. Didn't Never told him in my life that I was a kid who grew up in a domestic abuse home. So didn't, I haven't really told a whole lot of people that my whole life until I started working on this. Um, but immediately started thinking to myself, what are the odds that my lawyer is Nicole's lawyer and Nicole has two boys and now I can kind of be a little bit of her boy or her son's voice uh, by directing and making this film. Um, so I started thinking to myself, like, oh, I got to write this thing. I sat down. I had all these police reports and everything to write the script from. And I was overwhelmed. And I said, you know what? I don't think I'm supposed to write this one. And I remember I was at a film festival at the Indie Gathering in Ohio. And there was a guy running the, the class. And other than Trey Parker from South Park, who is an amazing writer, um, this guy was probably the best guy I've ever talked to who knew his stuff. So I decided I was going to give it a go. I called him up. Uh, we met and I pitched him and he sat quiet the whole time. And then at the end of the, of the conversation, he goes, okay, I'll do it. And I was surprised because he was what I thought would be out of my price range. Um, come to find out it's a kid who grew up in a domestic violence home too. And then you start reading the statistics when you start working on this. One in three women will be assaulted by an intimate lover in their lifetime. One in seven men. How do we not talk about this more? How do we not say what's wrong with us? How do we sweep this under the rug? How is this acceptable at all? So I feel we're doing that with this film because we're tackling not just Nicole's story, we're tackling all the stories. We're talking about how hard it is to leave. We're talking about how easy it is to be deceived. And if you don't understand those red flags, what seems like cute jealousy and, uh, and oh my God, he loves me so much, could become controlling and manipulative tendencies in the long run. And it's really good to learn these things. So, so we try to touch on those type of things. Uh, little things that I never thought of. And I, I was embarrassed, but so let's say that you decide to go get the, a witness relocation. You lose your schooling, you lose your family, you lose everything. And, and you're the victim. We just got to figure better things out. And we also have to start supporting good and healthy behaviors and teach it and talk about these things. And, and I think this goes hand in hand with mental health about just making sure that we that we don't produce children that don't get enough attention or get too much attention or whatever it may be. But let's try to, to do our very, very best with the humans that we're around and just leave them in better shape than we found them. If we do that every day, good things happen. Exactly, exactly. So you mentioned that you know you were a victim growing up as well in making this movie this real movie about violence about domestic violence abuse how did you um relive it did you relive it as you were making as you were making this film did you feel any type of way as you were making this film this is 
comedian Eric Escobar, the Mexipino millennial, and you are watching gold right now. You know why? Because you're watching The Michael Finkley Show. Stay tuned. Welcome to Father to Father. The mission of Father to Father Charleston, South Carolina is to help fathers in the low country area of South Carolina to be a positive and consistent presence in their children's lives. Father to Father provides community-based programs and support groups for fathers free of charge. They also help fathers connect to other resources they need so they can meet their responsibilities and secure their parental rights. Father to Father offers job coaching and employment connections that benefit fathers. Father to Father is a resource for local organizations that want to provide family support and father friendly services. If this program is a fit for you, visit our location in North Charleston, South Carolina and meet our friendly staff here to help and assist. Or visit our website at fathertofatherinc.org. So you mentioned that, you know, you were a victim growing up as mm -hmm. well. In making this movie, this real movie about violence, about domestic violence, abuse. How did you um, relive it? Did you relive it as you were making, as you were making this film? Did you feel any type of way as you were making this film? Funny enough, I was so wrapped up in doing it. I was pretty numb going through it. Wow. I felt what I saw on screen but I was kind of at a safe distance on the other side of things. Mm -hmm. And I was so uh, paying attention to the story and the storytelling that I made it all the way through this thing. And I remember looking at my wife saying, hey, you know what? I just thought this would be harder on me. And then now twice in the last month, I've crashed and just all of it has hit me. And it has hit me. First of all, like, why didn't I say anything for so long? It's been on my mind a lot. Like, why, why, like, why would I be ashamed as a kid that I couldn't have stopped my grown, big, strong dad from be beating up my mom? Like, it's so warped that you even think that way. But, but that's the baggage you hand off to people when you do these crazy things. Um, and then I felt really, really good because I feel like what we're doing matters so much. And I, I've done. I did a film on human trafficking and, the, and, and that one felt really good because I felt like I can scare people into action. They can see some of these statistics and they can take a stand. But when you start looking at the numbers for domestic violence, this is a true epidemic. And, 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 and I really think we got to do a much better job at talking about this and not alienating people who are in these situations and help them out. Um, and 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 w if we start early enough, whether it's a school shooter or an abusive uh, boyfriend or an abusive dad, whatever it may be, um, these things can be stopped earlier if we just listen and take care of people and don't ignore them. Um, when they say that they feel something, let's talk about that. Let's acknowledge that feeling. Uh, and see what can we do? Like we can't always give people what they want and what they want may not be healthy for them, but we can have an open line of communication and we can acknowledge things and we can make people not feel worthless. Um, and, and I think those things are so important. Definitely agree with that. I definitely agree with that because uh, sometimes we go through different things alone and we think we are alone and no, other, no one understands what we're going through, but when yeah. we speak up, that's when help come, comes, right? That's where yeah. we know that we're not alone anymore. We can support one another mm -hmm. um, in that right. Um, did any of the persons that were in this movie have a difficult time? I think a, a lot of them did. I feel the most sorry for the guy who had to play the husband mm -hmm. um, because you have to find the motivation to play that role, not as a villain, but he has to play the role as if the story was finding Warren. And, and the pieces that we never see is his inner battle with his demons. Um, and, I, and I know this is a completely separate conversation, 
But I believe that there is a battle there as well. And I believe that a lot of the people that do these things aren't necessarily bad humans, um, although some of them obviously are. But I think a lot of people are lost. And I think, again, if we listen and engage and care, we can we can fix a lot of these things. And, and the ones we can't fix, we can make better. I agree. I definitely agree. When all is said and done, everyone goes home, cut for the day, we're done, awesome project. How do you yeah. continue the conversation? Well, we're we're enabling Nicole. So the, the thing that I love about this is it's we are creating and building a platform for a woman who's already out at high schools teaching the young girls and boys, hey, this is what somebody who's not safe looks like. These are some of the red flags to be aware of. And even uh, after everything she's been through, talking to the ones who are a little lost, saying, hey, you don't have to be this way. You can you can do better, but start working on yourself and become a better human and, and find ways to deal with the anger or rage or often fears um, that really drive this stuff. And, and I and that's what I really want more than anything else. I want to build a giant platform for her to continue this this and and, I, and I'll be honest with you, uh, this film, will definitely be the best one I've ever made. Um, the actors were so committed. I mean, I've never had people so prepared. Uh, we got locations that we would normally have to pay an arm and a leg for, but for the cost, they were like, nope, come on up here and we can film at the historical society. And, we can... and I was like, wow, like so many people just lining up and saying, we'll, what can I do to help? How can we move this? And I'm thinking to myself, this is exactly what's needed on a topic like this. It's, it's amazing that you know when it's coming together and it's meant to be. Everything comes together. Everything falls into place. All your yeah. resources are there. And we can't wait to see the finished product of it. Of all that is said and done. <laughs> we've, done, we've done so much you've hit some awesome um targets when it comes down to your movie making and your acting career what are you still learning about yourself as you i think i'm learning first of all i've i've always been hard on myself so i'm learning that that i'm pretty good at this uh so that that that's really nice to to be able because in the beginning i was so hard on myself and i only looked at what can I do better? What can I do better? What can I do better? Uh, I just had a, a, a red carpet premiere screening in LA Wednesday last week. And the feedback has been off the charts. And, and, and to just kind of realize that, yeah, like this, this is going pretty well. You know, that was feature number nine. And there's two more right now. One is completed and one is uh, finding Nicole is in post-production and, and, who would have thought that I was going to be doing this full time when I decided, you know, what is it, six, seven years ago now, I decided I wanted to take a shot and do this full time and go after filmmaking and, and, and to be here with films that are successful, making money in a very strange uh, new marketplace. And, you know, I look at uh, the film that I told you about the uh, human trafficking called Betrayed. It, it was it's in 79 countries this little indie is distributed around the world by by sony and vision two giant companies our little film in this little film we have icons like john savage who's been in so many giant oscar winning films and, and richard tyson another juggernaut uh, a billy worth from the lost books like these giants um and they all came in just for a really important cause of human trafficking. And now we do find a Nicole with enormous star power again. And everybody's coming in and saying, I'll, I'll happily do it. This is a subject that needs it. And it's like, wow. That warms my heart. It really <laughs> does. Because season five here for, for us, Harley, is about biggest dreams. And yeah. our biggest dreams coming true. How does it feel to live in your dream? And what is your next biggest dream? 
<laughs> I, I, I pinch myself all the time. We, you know, and I love history. I love those who came before me. When I make a film, I often try to give a little nod to filmmakers that I that I uh, really uh, appreciate and, and that inspired me, uh, because that's the thing we we all build on each other's backs. Uh, and 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 if it wasn't for them, I would never be able to do this because I'd have to figure it all up by myself. And um, so it feels amazing to be doing this and, and to be here because I didn't know. I remember I told my wife that I felt that I wanted to do this. I thought she was going to say, don't be ridiculous. Get a job and hobby act like you have been. But she didn't. She says, I believe in you. Go for it. And uh, here we are, you know, and, and, and that that's amazing. Left to do. I, I mean, I want to I want to make more films that really mean something and matter that makes you think that make us um you know kick the tire and 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 say hey is this good is this right should this be like this or not um we did a film uh, called called eternal code that was about you know kind of where we're heading with uh, with uh, you know whether it's artificial intelligence or the elon chip or or these type of things um you know we played with the future of that um you know, these type of things are, are intriguing to me. I, I have another film that we're likely doing next that really touches on mental health and opioid addiction. So that may be what we're tackling next. But it, but it, but I like something that's more, it's great, it's plenty enough. If I can entertain you and you don't have to worry about life for an hour and a half, I'm happy with that. But I'm going to have some more nuggets in there. I'm going to have some subliminal stuff that will probably make you think a little bit. And, and I love that. I love being able to spread a message of, of us trying to be better humans today than what we were yesterday. I think if we just live with that, uh, I always tell my, cause I have two, I have seven and nine year old girls. And uh, I remember that frozen movie is the second one. They say, uh, do the next right thing. And I say, you know, here's this kid movie saying something that is so good, but that's what, what we should all do. Just do the next right thing. Whatever you do, it, do the next right thing. Wow. This has, your words have really inspired me. Uh, oh, that's because awesome. Because you are, you're going at it and you're not stopping. And you're going full force. Mm -hmm. So please continue because every movie every role everything that you create going forward someone needs to hear someone definitely needs to hear especially in the year of 2022 yeah. after all that we've been through right someone yeah. needs that relatable factor and you're it my friend you are definitely it could you tell the thing fam how we can follow you on social media and when can we watch finding nicole hmm well, let's start with the last part. Finding mm -hmm. Nicole, we are rushing to get to get it ready. We are going to go after Cannes Film Festival and Tribeca Film Festival first. Okay. Uh, I am planning to go back to LA uh, for AFM. Uh, we're signing our vampire film Beneath Us All, so that's going to be that's going to be a lot of fun to to go there and sign that film. Um, as far as where you, where you can uh, find me, uh, it's Harley Wallen on Facebook. I'm really interactive there. It's the the, the Harley Wallen on uh, on Instagram. I'm I'm also really active there. I have just started trying again on Twitter, but it's not as conversational. It's hard for me. I got you. Uh, but I'm trying. I got you. <laughs> it's a process, Harley. It's a process. Right, right. <laughs> well, I thank you so much for being with us and telling us your experiences, your words, your projects. You! Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. Big fan of the Charlie from Put a Ring on it, and you're watching, watching the Michael Pinkley Show. Show. CTR Media Network was created for today's podcasters. We provide a safe haven for content creators that are everyday people doing extraordinary things.
we have a system of positioning, monetization training, coaching, and support for our podcasters' success. CTR Media Network simply bridges that gap with a level playing field for your dreams to come true cost effectively. Our team provides a premium service and experience for our podcasters to grow. CTR Media Network provides access, support, resources, coaching, and community for our podcasters to win, if you put in the work. We believe that we are living in a unique time which requires you to share your message of hope with millions of people around the world. Remember that the world is never too saturated for you, your voice and message. A platform for positive impactful media where the content creators are in the driver's seat. Visit our website today by going to www.ctrmedianetwork.com. I'm Joey Marie Urbina, and I play Yamara in Snowfall, and you're watching The Michael Finkley Show. Next, Michael Finkley, gospel artist Dennis Turner is with us as he tells us about his projects and more. Next, Finkley. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. I hope that you are inspired and encouraged and also informed by this amazing interview. Harley, thank you so much for being with us and continue to strive in your craft. We appreciate you. Much success to you and your project, Finding the Coal and Beyond. Thank you so much for being with us and talking with us about it. Uh, much success, much, much success to you. If you have not already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Michael Finkley Show. Ring that bell for notification. We'll see you in email. Stay in hey, new content is available. Listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And for more information about what we do, visit our website, michaelfinkleyshow.com. Of course, we're on U42, Roku TV, and also Amazon via their podcast platform. So go watch us and go listen to us as well. Thank you so much, Fink Fam, for watching us and supporting us and encouraging us along the way. We really appreciate you. And y'all continue to pursue your dreams. Go after them. They're waiting just for the asking from you. So just go pursue it and do it. As always, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.